This conference is especially important because um, while it does come as a run-up to um, COP21 in Paris, um, I think it does uh, actually address some themes which are not addressed in, in Paris. So the climate mitigation talks are especially um, attuned to reduction of greenhouse gases, um, but adaptation has been traditionally um, not treated as thoroughly by the um, mitigation regimes. So not only are we speaking about adaptation here at this conference, but we're talking about failure to adapt. And so what does that mean? Those, those are sort of the consequence management of um, impacts of climate change. And so what I think is really great about this conference is I'm beginning to see um, a community of practice emerging around consequence management of climate change. And I'm hoping that these discussions, while they're informal now, could lead themselves to be into a more formal process, which over time um, might even build a, a regime uh, around consequence management of climate change it, itself. And that, that's a very undertreated category. But it's never too late. Um, so this is an issue that um, Northern Europeans, um, Scandinavian countries, um, security institutions in the United States have now understood for about a decade. Um, but what's very important now is to bring um, participants from other parts of the world into the conversation. So for me, um, it was very heartening to see um, some people from China here, some people from Africa. So as we expand the conversation into other regions, um, it's important to keep having these um, conversations and reinforcing the messages of the security implications of climate change. Well, one way to, uh, to raise um, interest and awareness on this topic, um, frankly, is to also engage the multinational corporations. Um, because um, valuation of natural ecosystems is extremely important, um, both for the corporate bottom line, um, but also for the public as a whole. So as um, people realize that not only the built infrastructure, but the green infrastructure is incredibly important um, just for our daily lives. Um, we can then think more about what are the security implications for others, you know, for those that live in the fragile states, for those that don't enjoy um, the benefits of, of parkland or clean water, say, for, the, for their Coca-Cola, that sort of thing. So you can start um, at a corporate level. You can start at a level where people appreciate and understand the outdoors and the wonderful parkland. Um, but then you nar narrow it down and try to really understand what the implications are um, for those who are less fortunate for the fragile states. Um, but another thing I wanted to say is, is, particularly at this moment, people really understand the, um, the crisis of, of refugees that are, uh, that are now on the shores of Europe. And I think people are sophisticated enough to take a few steps back and try to understand what the roots are of this migration. And it's, people are becoming increasingly aware that this did have to do with droughts in Syria. This does have to do with unsustainable fishing in some areas of Africa. So I think the real visceral um, understanding of just looking around the train stations, frankly, and seeing the refugees here um, gets people thinking about the roots of the conflict in new ways. I'm sorry, the, the way that conflict interacts with migration environmental migration um, in new ways. And so I think this is, is raising the level of awareness within the general public of the security dimensions of environmental degradation and climate change.